you, Thomas, and thank you, Graham. Ori cannot wait for that. All right, next up, I'm going to have Ted Price from Insomniac Games is going to be with me in just a minute to talk about Sunset Overdrive. But first, let's take a look at this cutscene. How did you get in here? I'm looking for a guy named Brill Cream. Troopmaster Brill Cream is missing. Well, maybe I can help you find him. Maybe you'll be lucky if I let you live. Kind of a dick, huh? Treason! Arrest for Kim and banish her from the troop. Chill out, Mussolini. I am the troop master, and this is my troop. Ah, oh, man. Are you gonna tell me where Brill Cream is, or what? You wanna find Brill Cream? You must do as I say. What? What was that all about? So I'm here with Ted Price from Insomniac Games, Sunset Overdrive. He'll explain. Ted, what did we just see? We just saw the introduction to one of the factions in the game. Okay. This is Troop Bushido. These yep. are adult adventurers, kind okay. of like Boy Scouts, but they're adults, who during this apocalyptic moment in the game took refuge in a uh, samurai scout mu samurai museum and they've now adopted the samurai code so we call them the Bushido scouts they're a little twisted and you, so you can see their leader has an issue uh, with his authority being challenged but they're just one example of the many factions you meet in the game a little twisted I like because everything in Sunset Overdrive is a little twisted, a lot twisted we're gonna maybe. get right into the gameplay right here so why don't we sh show us what walk us through what we're gonna see so first I, I want to you to check out the character that uh, Blaine's playing here here. All right, this Blaine is, just, is off here on the side playing. And you'll notice this is a different character than the one we just saw in the video. Right. You have full customization over your characters in this game because in Sunset Overdrive, we want you to be who you want to be. Okay. So from the very beginning, you can choose your gender, your ethnicity. You Throughout the game, you earn all sorts of vanity to outfit your character in some pretty crazy fashions. Uh, at this point, though, Blaine is moving through the world yep. uh, with momentum. He is grinding, bouncing. Uh, vaulting through the world and we set up the world so that you can move very quickly through it we wanted to move away from the traditional cover based shooting mechanic that we're also familiar with and introduce a new paradigm to shooters now I want to talk a little bit you talked about the customization it's important to point out that you, you told me earlier off the air customization that doesn't impact gameplay it doesn't right uh, now you, why, why is that tell me why you guys made that decision well, we didn't want people to feel restricted okay. in terms of the vanity choices that they make in the game. And again, if you want to freely express yourself, you shouldn't feel like there are consequen negative consequences for, for example, choosing the quote-unquote wrong outfit. Right. And in this game, we really do push it when it comes to style. Right. We, we have some, some, we have a few sedate things that okay. you might feel comfortable in. Oh, come uh, on. Look at this shirt, will you? <laughs> <laughs> we might have this shirt in the game. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> but we also have a lot of very... Uh, avant-garde fashions. Yeah. Now, something else to notice here, when Blaine's moving through, you see those lightning bolts? Yep. What he's doing is he is... That's in the upper right-hand corner of your HUD. That's right. He is uh, earning style okay. as he's moving through the game and doing more and more complex moves, such as jumping from wire to wire, bouncing on different objects, killing enemies while he's grinding or traversing. As he builds up style, he starts to activate amps. And these are special abilities that you can attach to your character, your melee, your weapons. We even have things called epic amps, which trigger at certain points and just do crazy things. Right. But there are many, many in the game, and you uh, actually construct them. You craft them okay. in the game based with stuff that you found. Now, also, you might have noticed that he just fried a whole bunch of these OD, these mutants in the game, by jumping on a device, uh, a trap. Yep. That was uh, one of our flame traps in the game. But throughout the world, it's very interactive. There are tons of things that you can experiment with, play with, as you're moving through the world. Ah, uh, here we go. That looks like a boss. <laughs> it's a pretty nasty <laughs> character. And he's tough. And he, unlike most big guys, he's very agile. No matter where Blaine goes, he's probably going to be chased down by the Herker. Sure. A Herker can climb on buildings. He can throw uh, boulders at you. Uh, basically terrorize you. However, Blaine... I believe was using the propane launcher and shooting bottles of propane at this. Well, now now he's not. Now he's using the AK. Right. I would suggest that Blaine use a fire-based weapon because this guy is particularly susceptible to fire. All right. And all of our enemy factions are susceptible to various uh, different types of weapons. Right. So it gives you a lot of opportunity to experiment with weapon strategy. Now I also want to point out that you you know I know that the game is really about you know getting up off the ground. 
but even if you're off the ground, that doesn't mean you're safe. Not at all. The enemies will climb, they're very agile, they'll climb after you. We have flying enemies in the game, lots of projectile enemies, and it's varied. Again, we try to keep you on your toes and keep you moving. Now, how far are this particular, oh, look, I love this. Oh, okay. you died. Hold on, what? We, we, get, we get to see a, a respawn sequence, and there we go. Oh, little homage to one of our <laughs> we, favorite games. We know what that is. Yeah. Every time you respawn, you'll see a, a different animation. Now, I, I want to talk a little bit about the weapons. Um, there's a variety of weapons available, in the game, obviously. Yes. And you guys are, we saw one that, let, let, talk us through what we're seeing. So, uh, Blaine, Blaine is using the propane launcher here, but he's also got at his disposal the TN Teddy Launcher, which right. is something I mentioned earlier today. This is a teddy bear who's got dynamite strapped to his chest. And he fire, when you fire him out, he makes little cute sayings and he blows up. Uh, <laughs> Very good to take, uh, in terms of taking out large numbers of enemies. Right. He could also use a flaming compensator, which is actually one of my favorites, a shotgun that will light things on fire. Great, super powerful short-range weapon. Uh, as you can see there, he just lit, lit the Herker on fire. Another good one uh, to use in a crowd is the Captain Ahab. Oh, Blaine, I can't blame. I am, you told me that you would be able to play through on normal, no there problem. Go, and he respawns out of a phone booth. All right. Look at, that's awesome. <laughs> you know what? We wanted to make dying fun. <laughs> right, exactly. So, just but like it does, But it doesn't hurt you. I mean, it's, you're not penalized for dying, right? Correct, you are not. Right, so it's a really, you said you really guys did, did make it fun. I think it's important to know, too, this is an open world game. There are lots and lots of missions and quests that you will be uh, ex going on right. as you explore this giant world and traverse through it in these unique ways. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the multiplayer. We've talked about the multiplayer over the past uh, few months, but can you give us some more details? Obviously, this is a single player, but give us some details while we're watching Blaine play. So Chaos Squad is the name of our multiplayer mode in this game. You and seven other friends engage in a series of randomized missions through the same open world. Okay. So you and eight people are playing through the open world together, and the culmination of those missions is what we call night defense. Sure. When you all are getting together and defending uh, these giant vats of overcharge from marauding OD. Throughout, and, and in those, sorry, in, in those uh, night defense rounds, if you manage to survive, you win some very cool prizes and awards that you can take back into the single player campaign. That looks amazing. Now also earlier today, you announced, uh, we announced the, uh, the console. That's right, pretty yeah. exciting. The yeah. white Xbox <laughs> Sunset Overdrive console. It's amazing, and all of a sudden Insomniac were uh, pretty stunned and, and just, it's a dream come true for us. This is now this this so now what's what's he have to do here? I mean this I've seen I've seen him play this. I've seen now, someone play it better, but this actually does have a big backstory behind this particular okay. amusement park. You are helping out another one of the factions in the game called the Fargars. Okay. They are uh, they are somebody we will go into more detail on later, but they have had a they have a problem with one of the enemy factions in the game who have stolen uh, a an important item. Okay. And so you've got to get to get the king of the scabs, that's mm -hmm. the name of the enemy faction, to come out from his hiding place in one of these towers. And you do so by destroying those uh -oh. towers, which he did, yeah. and destroying the railroad, uh, the cars the that were king. on the track. Here we go. Glory king scab. Nice job, Blaine. Well done. Well done Blaine. Now, if Blaine wanted to, he could just jump right into Chaos Squad from his single player campaign. Throughout the world, we've got Chaos Squad photo booths that you can step into and immediately uh, join a party right. and start a game in the same world, yeah. multiplayer. So, so we, we announced a lot. I mean, we've got the customization. You've got all the different multiplayer elements. I mean, there's there's so much more to the Sunset Overdrive, right? There is, uh, and there's a lot. We, you know, we're always very careful to, uh, okay, reveal more and more as we get closer to launch, right. Now, I, I mean, this is. How would you describe this? Is this an open world game? I, we're looking right now. We're looking yeah. at some folks right behind us who are actually playing the game. You can probably see them up oh, yeah. there. So, actually, you're going to have hands on at Gamescom, right? I believe. I yeah. believe so. Yes. Yes, we, we are, are going to have. So, if you're coming to Gamescom for public days over the next few days, we will have hands on. You can get your hands on Sunset Overdrive. Mm -hmm. Some of what you just saw right here. Uh, so, Ted, uh, you know, as you guys march towards the release of the game, which comes out, comes out in America on yep. the 28th of October, here in Europe on October 31st. And that's obviously also when the console will be available as well, right? That's correct. So there's a lot going on with Sunset Overdrive. All right, we have, we have a trailer, right? Apparently we, we have do. a trailer, so we're going to show you this made trailer right now. Ted from Insomniac Games, thank you for coming by to show us Sunset Overdrive. If you're coming to Gamescom, you'll have a chance to get hands-on uh, this weekend, so do not forget that. All right, let's take a look at this brand new Sunset Overdrive trailer. I've lost so many friends. Seen so much tragedy. Enjoy being the first people on the planet to drink Overcharge! 
Sometimes I wonder why fate chose me to live when they all die. <laughs> oh, yeah, because I'm not a dumbass. <laughs> My name's Floyd. I was a head scientist at Fisco, but I decided to leave because her health insurance doesn't cover this. If they had just given me a bit more time to research overcharge, I'm sure I would have figured out it would do this or that. And I definitely, probably, would have caught that. But if you think their accidents are nasty, wait till you see what they're making on purpose. They've got eyes everywhere, and now they send in a legion of bots to, quote, liquidate their assets. Fizco cover-up begin. And I must say, they are efficient workers. This is our turn. You will die. Go ahead and check the exceeds expectations box under year-end assassination review. Oh, damn. And there's little old you in the center of all this. But you seem to be holding your own. And ever since I crossed your path, survival has gotten a lot more survivable. But don't get cocky. Stay moving and stay shooting. If you stand around, you're going to die. And then I'm going to die. And then I'm going to put my ghostly foot up your ghostly <laughs> Go forth and enjoy your apocalypse. Have fun. <laughs> All right, everybody, that 